Welcome to the Money is Emotional podcast with Christine Lukin, the Financial Dignity Coach. In this podcast, we help you recover a positive and peaceful relationship with your personal finances. We do this by bringing together wise money management with emotional intelligence. Join us for this journey where we navigate our relationship with money as Christine Lucan draws from years of experience and guest experts to help you get to the root of your money issues. Hello and welcome to Money is Emotional with your host, Christine Lucan. Christine, what's going on? Well, other than some haters on social (laughs) media, everything is going fine. We love haters. (laughs) We love haters because that means people are listening and whether you, you know, whatever. Do we want to say what the haters were about? Oh, I'm I'm sure people can guess. You know, we disagreed with Dave Ramsey a couple episodes ago. So you can't say that out loud. (laughs) The fanatics have come out. (laughs) (laughs) The fanatics have come out to defend Dave Ramsey. So Yeah. And hey, you know, it was a respectful disagreement, but hey. I don't expect everybody to agree with me, so it's fine. I'm pretty sure, and I I could be wrong, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that anybody who posts on social media uh, as part of the Dave tribe, there's actually a rule that they have to have a tattoo of Dave somewhere on their backside. (laughs) I mean, that's just, I've heard that. That's just a rumor. It doesn't mean it's correct. Oh my gosh, okay. so we funny. should probably move on because now we're making your guest very feel very <laughs> awkward. We're not doing any uh, we're not doing any permanent tattoos, uh, Robert. Just to let you know, no virtual tattoos. No. Nope. Well, virtual tattoos might not be too bad. That's a good idea. Or temporary tattoos. Or temporary tattoos, but just not of certain people. <laughs> All right, Christine. Yes. Robert did come to the show for a very specific reason. It wasn't to talk yes. about Dave tattoos. No, it was not. However, before we get started, we have a disclaimer. So, as you might have guessed from the title, there's some adult language in this episode. So, Mm. if you have young ears in close proximity, you might want to hit pause and come back later. Now, don't worry. It's going to be great. (laughs) We're we're not going to be cussing cussing a blue streak here, but the title of the episode is Badass Retirement. And this is actually the title of our special guest, Robert Paglarini, his new book, Badass Retirement. And I have a special place in my heart for Robert because he endorsed my first book, Money is Emotional. So welcome to the show, Robert. Thanks, Christine. It's so nice to be here. And uh, that's so interesting that you gave that disclaimer about (laughs) the foul language I've never really thought about badass being a bad word, but I suppose it is. Well, you know, some some people like to keep it super clean. Now, we're uh, we're not super squeaky clean here, but we like to keep it uh, on the straight and narrow. So but, you know, I am so excited that you're here because, you know, you're a certified financial planner. You're also a certified divorce financial analyst, which is cool. Uh, you're the president of Pacifica Wealth and the author of five books, which is so awesome. And I love that you're not like the typical financial professional. Hmm. You are quite the adventurer. I mean, you've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, you've hiked the Incan Trail to Machu Picchu, and you've hang glided in Brazil. Yeah. And you're not 25, right? (laughs) No, I'm not. (laughs) And the cool thing is I did many of those things with my clients. And I would say all of them were older than I was when we did those. So, yeah, I I really I try to embody the uh, the badass spirit of uh, of even pre-retirement. But yeah, many of my clients, they, they love being adventurous. They love doing things that take them out of their comfort zones. And the only reason there's a book called Badass Retirement is because for the last 30 years, I've worked with some really badass clients. I mean, that's truly what this is really all about. And that's how this quote unquote idea came to me is just being around other people who were really just living very cool lives that 
that are a little bit different than maybe what a lot of us think about retirement? Yeah. Well, I have to admit, I almost quit reading your book at the beginning. What? When, when you what? said that a <laughs> well, you said wow. that a badass this, retirement. This interview is not going very well. <laughs> well. Well, let me let me clarify because you said a badass retirement isn't just sitting by the ocean in a beach chair, and I have to admit that that sounds pretty good to me. So, yeah, please tell us, clarify, like what is the difference between an average retirement and a badass retirement? Yeah. So the the big difference between the two, and I'm glad you kept reading despite that. So <laughs> listen, I love the beach just as much as anyone else. And the difference is when we're in the middle of it, when we're working, we're listen, we're creating a podcast right now, right? We're we have clients, we have deadlines, we've got to commute. Like, of course, it feels good to hang out on the beach and to relax to check out, to just sort of disengage. That, of course, feels wonderful. The question is, is that a temporary reprieve from, you know, the grind? Mm. Or is it a lifestyle that you can do for 20 or 30 years in retirement? And, and I would argue that once you're retired, yeah, you do want to relax, you want to recover, you want to sort of kick back a little bit, but it can't be your entire life in retirement. I mean, if you think about it, Christine, think about the times in your life where you felt the most inspired, where you felt just the most engaged, the most fulfilled. I would bet it's probably not when you were relaxing, when you were on the beach, it was probably when you were creating something or were, mm -hmm. when you were doing something exciting. And so that's this whole idea of the difference between a badass retirement and an average retirement is, yeah, certainly relax, enjoy the beach, golf, do all those things that you would typically think of in retirement. But at the same time, for many people, I think they want something a little bit more than just checking out for 20 or 30 or 40 years in retirement. Right. So yeah. I'm glad you kept reading. Um, <laughs> I did. <laughs> and the, the, other, the other thing I would say is, I get it. I even write early on in the book, this whole approach, this badass approach to retirement, it's definitely not for everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and I get that. This is just one flavor of retirement. And if you're thinking, yeah, listen, dude, I, I really just want to sit on the beach all the time. I just want to golf. I just want to hang out. I don't want any responsibilities. I don't want any challenges. Great. Like, go for it. Like, <laughs> figure out what it is that's going to motivate you and, and really make you fulfilled and do that. But my experience has been in working with a lot of people retiring and who have retired is that works for a little bit. And then they think, okay, they start wondering, is there something more? And that's right. really what this badass approach to retirement is about. It's a little bit something more than just kicking back and checking out. Yeah. Well, and that's interesting because I recently read that, you know, the younger generations are saying that they'll never retire, that they don't ever want to retire. And I'm wondering if it's because they're thinking of that traditional retirement of like, I'm just going to check out. I'm either going to sit by the beach or if I don't have enough money, I'm just going to, you know, sit in my recliner and watch daytime television for the next 20 years. And to them, that's like, there's no way I'm doing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that's sort of the vibe that I'm getting with a lot of 45, 55, even 60 year olds. They're like, they see what an average retirement looks like. Maybe they saw their their parents retire and they're like, uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. Like, there's got to be more to life than that. Mm -hmm. um, because and if you think about it, if you are approaching retirement or have recently retired, probably means you've worked hard, right? For 40 or 50 years, like grinding it out, getting up early, doing that commute, like having a boss and like having to meet deadlines, 
all like we've worked really, really hard to get to the point of retirement. And, and I think people recognize that they want something a little bit more fulfilling than maybe what we typically see in retirement. And not everyone, like I said, not everyone, but there are certainly a few of us who look at average retirement and think that it's, it feels maybe just a little bit empty. Mm. Like, I, I don't know, the phrase that I hear just so often is, there's got to be something more, right? right? They wake up and they're like, oh my God, like I've, I've been retired for three months and I'm in this routine, <laughs> but it's like, it's feeling a little empty. Like there truly has to be something more. And yeah. and that's that's at least what I'll, many people that I talk to wish for. Yeah. Well, and this, this kind of leads into one of my questions where you straight up say that a badass retirement is not for everyone. What are the similarities in the people who are ideal candidates for a badass retirement? Because as I was reading your book, I was like, oh, I totally relate to this because, you know, I'm 49. And when I think about retiring, I'm like, yeah, of course I want beach time. I want to play golf. But I see myself continuing to write books, continuing to have at least a handful of coaching clients, you know, volunteering staying physically active and and those kinds of things, right? It's like, I, I don't just want to be, you know, my husband and I to be this little old couple that like does mall walking on the weekends to stay in shape. (laughs) For sure. Right. (laughs) Right. No, that's a really good question. So that in the, the answer, I don't know, it might surprise you. I, there really aren't any similarities you would think that there would be because I think maybe people might have this impression of this badass retiree, right? You know, they're maybe they own their own business. They're jumping out of planes. They're like super active. They got six pack abs. They're like listening to Tony Robbins, you know, (laughs) audiobooks all day. Like that's the, what you might think of as a badass retiree, like someone who's pushing it all the time and like just can't get enough. And while certainly that is a a, a group of people who um, certainly identify with the badass retirement sort of lifestyle, I am always shocked at the people that this attracts because it can be like the little old lady, like, honestly, I'll have people. So I've got this badass retirement hat that I wear like all the time. And I'll have, I'll have people come up to me and be like, what is that? And I start talking to them about it. And they start telling me about some of this cool stuff that they do and and just how much they relate to it. And it's, it's across the board. Like there's no single like characteristics, I would say that, make people like really relate to this. Um, it's, it's really just someone who wants to live a bigger, more fulfilled life. That's not just boring, I guess. I I, I mean, and I don't want to insult anyone, but (laughs) you know, I really think of average retirement for some people, they, they look at that and they go, Oh man, that's just so boring. Like, day after day it's the same thing like there's no thrill there's no excitement there's no adventure it's just sort of you're existing Mm. and and i guess the the people who who really like this approach it's like they don't just want to exist like they want to live and they want to expand they want to create they want to grow they want to do things in retirement um I always say, you know, when you retire, you you retire from your job. You don't have to retire from life. Mm. And I think that's what people are are really uh, are really attracted to. Yeah. Well, it, that made me think of my stepmom uh, who passed away a couple of years ago. But in retirement, she started belly dancing. She started beekeeping. She bought a cabin and turned it into a, you know bed and breakfast. Wow. I mean, she was just 
she was like the busiest retired person I've ever known in my entire life. <laughs> that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exact. That's someone who in retirement, they don't take their foot off the gas pedal. That's someone who like, like they just floor it, right? And, yeah. and it's so important because for again, 30, 40, 50 years, we've had all these commitments and all these responsibilities that we had to do, mm -hmm. you know, usually for a paycheck, right? We, we work, we, we, we need income. And retirement is the first time in our lives where we don't have those external responsibilities, those external pressures of, of things that we have to do. This is the first time in our life where we get to do things that we want to do. Mm. And what a powerful time in our lives to really experience and to experiment with different things and to try new things and to create and, you know, hell, start belly dancing. Why not? Like, <laughs> Why <that's, not? laughs> that is amazing. Um, yeah. And I'll often tell people that, you know, in retirement, we have more free time than we've ever had in our lives, mm -hmm. but we also have the least amount of time than we've ever had in our lives. True. And I think if you can really get your head around that paradox, that you really start to appreciate that, like, this is, this is it. This is your time. Right. For, for 40 or 50 years, it's always about the future. Oh, we got to save for the future. Oh, we've got this next thing for the future. Oh, retirement's coming up. That's the future. Well, in retirement, the future is right damn now. Like this yeah. is it. There is no future, folks. Right. Retirement is it. And so you really have to make the most of it. And that means making the most of every day in retirement. Excuse me. Yes, you. Thank you so much for listening to the Money is Emotional podcast. We hope you're enjoying it so far. If you have any questions or would like to talk more about this topic, you can find us at www.christinelukin.com and all of our social media platforms are listed in the show notes. Yeah. So in your book, you say that the gap between wanting something and having something is what fuels us. What do you mean by that? Oh, yeah. I love the gap. So, you know, whether we all have these thoughts of where we want to be, things we want to do. Um, and so where we are versus where we want to be. And that could be maybe our health, maybe our weight. It could be, you know, we want to we have this novel of this book that we want to write in our heads. And where we are is, you know, we're sitting in front of a blank page on in a Word document like that's where we are. But right. where we want to be is like all right, hitting that publish button of having the book done. And so it's, it's that gap that I think for, for me at least, and I think for, for others, that can be either a source of, of depression because, oh man, look, look at how far I am from where I want to be. Wow, I, I really want to lose 30 pounds. Oh my God, that's terrible. I'm so far away from that. It's very unmotivating. Mm -hmm. And so that's one way to look at it. Or the other way to look at it is it can provide fuel and uh, a, a source of drive of, yeah, right. I, I've got a, a pretty big distance of where I, where I want to be from where I am. But that's what can get you out of bed every morning. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important in retirement. Listen, we, we always try to make things so safe and secure and so comfortable and easy and relaxed when we retire. But honestly, I, I think that's a formula for depression and failure. If mm. we're always trying to make things just so damn easy. Right. Like, I, I want to jump out of bed every single morning with like energy and drive because I want to do things. I want to challenge myself. And so that's what the gap does it for me anyway. And I think if you think about your own life, Christine, that there are things that you you want to do, and and, yeah. and those things are probably what give you energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of my big goals is to own rental property in Florida, and right now that fuels me. It's it's on my vision board. I've actually like 
got the uh, property investment worksheet so I can, you know, put in all the numbers and look at all the expenses. And it's, it's exciting to me. And I love that you talk about this because I bring it up in a different way with my clients where I talk about delayed gratification versus prolonged pleasure. From the moment you see something you want to buy to the moment you possess it, you can either have it feel like this is the delayed gratification and I can't have it and I want it and you make yourself miserable, or you can prolong the pleasure of wanting it, almost like flirting with it, you know? So it's like every time I think about Florida property and I go on to Zillow and I look at things, rather than have it feel, you know, I've decided that this is not going to make me feel depressed or make me feel like I'm not worthy or make me feel like I'm lacking. I've decided that I am going to fuel this desire and I am going to enjoy every second between the first moment of wanting it until I actually have it. I absolutely love that. Yeah, that that's exactly what I'm referring to as well. Um, yeah. But I really like how you put it. It's the idea of delayed gratification, like, oh, you're pushing off this 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 feeling of uh, of pleasure off to the future. You know, mm -hmm. who wants that? Everyone, I, I want it now. But right. you're, what you're doing is you're saying, yeah, even though you might not get it until the future, you can enjoy the process and enjoy the fact that you're wanting it. Uh, yeah. So I, I just, I just absolutely love that. Yeah. Awesome. So let's talk about one of the five drivers of badass retirement, and that is upgrading your health. Why did you include that in this book about retirement? And what does this look like for your clients? You've got one job in retirement, and that is to stay healthy. That is the number one job that we all have. It's more mm -hmm. important than, frankly, our relationships. It's more important than our finances. It's more important than our goals. Because if we are not healthy, then everything else is secondary. Yep. I mean, think about the last time you had a sore throat or a headache. Like your goals, what you were going to do the following week, like your long-term plan, that rental real estate you're thinking about in Florida, all of that goes aside. Like you're not even thinking about that. All you care about is how can I feel better again? Mm -hmm. And so that's why your health is so important in retirement. And I think we have this, this idea that, well, as we get older, we just get unhealthier. And, and mm -hmm. I, and I wanted to, and I wanted to push back on that because I don't think that's necessarily true. I actually think that as you get older, you can upgrade your health because in retirement, you have more time, you have more money, you have more resources, you have more wisdom than you've ever had in your life. And so if you can take some of that time and resources and money and do things for your health, maybe mm -hmm. work with a coach, dial up your nutrition, you know, have a, have someone help you work out, have you, you know, have a better recovery plan, take certain supplements. You can absolutely get healthier as you age. And, and listen, if you want to live a badass retirement, that means you're going to need some energy. You're going to yeah. need to have some fuel to do all of the things that you want to do. And that could be spending time with your grandkids. It could be going on a cruise. It could be jumping out of planes. It could be hiking mountains. It could be starting that nonprofit, writing that book, whatever it is, you know, retirement runs on energy. You have to have the energy and you have to feel good. You have to be mobile. You can't be in pain. And so that's why it's essential to focus on your health if you truly want to live a wonderful life in retirement. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. But I, you know, I feel like society, especially in the past, has almost like wanted to take people who are over 60 and just like wrap them in bubble wrap to keep them <laughs> yeah. safe. 
right? Yeah. So they don't break a hip. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm so happy that you mentioned that. I just wrote a post about <laughs> retirees don't need to be bubble wrapped. <laughs> so, I, I love I, it. I didn't even see that. <laughs> yes, yes. It's it's one of my most popular posts, actually. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, now you're going to get me on my soapbox because I truly feel like the media and our culture is not our friend. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wrote a, another post about the cult and culture, and there is this, it's just this pervasive belief that as we get older, we get weaker. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. as we get older, we become less capable and fragile and that we need to be protected. And I'm, I'm telling people like, like, folks, it's retirement. It's not kindergarten, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're strong ass people. We've come 50, 60 plus years. We've got some wisdom. We've been banged up. We've had setbacks. Don't treat me like I'm a freaking child. Like that's not what the culture or the media should be doing. But unfortunately, a lot of people get sucked into what I call the retirement myth. And that yeah. is this belief that, well, when we're retired, we better take it easy. But, you know, to hell with that. We don't need yeah. to take it easy. I think when we get older, we should take more risks than when we're younger. Uh, and so I say, you know, avoid this belief that uh, when you retire, that you're just less capable and weaker and fragile because you are not. Yeah. Well, and you know what? You and I survived the era of optional seatbelts and no helmets riding bicycles. I mean, I remember, you know, my parents like, you know, coming to a stop and me and my brother rolling in the back of the station wagon. Absolutely. <laughs> to the front. Right. So like, hey, we survived that. Like, we're pretty tough. <laughs> Absolutely. We are tougher than any 20 year old, any 30 year old um, out there. If you just <laughs> think about what you've gone through, what you've survived, the challenges that you've overcome, like we're warriors. We are bad ass warriors when we get to the point that we're retiring. So we, we can't forget that and we can't let the culture sort of dictate or, or have this message permeate because we're going to start to believe it. And yeah. so we need something that sort of shakes us and be like, no, you are a whole lot tougher and badder than, uh, than what the culture thinks that you are. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, obviously we probably have people in the audience who are in retirement or getting ready to retire, but for the listeners who are in our audience that might be 10 or 15 years plus away from retirement and they're like, yeah, that's, I want a badass retirement. So what steps might they want to take now to guarantee that they're able to have a badass retirement when the time comes for them? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think if if this message is resonating with folks who are, you know, 10 or 15 years away from retirement, um, then that just that puts a smile on my face because it, it, it means that these that that they're they're in a situation where they don't want the average retirement. They want something a little bit more. And so you don't have to wait until you're retired to have a badass life, you can start living that right now. Yeah. And one of the, the biggest, I don't want to say, I guess it's a challenge for some retirees is that they lose meaningful relationships once they retire. Mm. Uh, because when we're working, I mean, listen, our jobs, our careers, it's, it's really a large source of camaraderie of social connection. Our friends often are the people that we work with. Um, we feel like we've got responsibility, that we're making a difference. And when we retire, like all of that goes away mm. or it certainly changes overnight. Right. And, and so if you're a few years away from retirement, I would definitely focus on creating social connections outside of retirement, I would start thinking about the different hobbies, the different goals, the different challenges that you want to do in retirement. I mean, I, I again, I work with a lot of folks who they're like, well, I'm just gonna retire and then sort of see like the kind of life that I wanna develop. 
And that's, I mean, that's fine. But often what happens is months turn into years. Uh, and then it's like, well, you know, I, I never really figured it out. Like I never mm. really pushed myself to like try to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, and so if you can get a jump start on that, even before you retire, do yeah. some crazy hobbies, put some adventure in your life, find some friends, do join meetups, whatever it is, you have to build a life outside of your work. And mm -hmm. so I would say that's, that's the, the first step if you're a few years away from retirement. Yeah. Well, and certainly I think I would echo back to our discussion about health. Start taking care of your health right now. Right. Because don't, don't just say like, okay, well, I'll wait till I re I retire and then I'll have time to exercise because if you wait that long, it's going to be so much harder. <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> I mean, you know, listen, as we age, it's sometimes we just have to push hard just to stay in the same place. <laughs> so. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I told you I'm 49 and sometimes I have to remind myself like, Christine, you, you can't do plyo the way you used to, you know, 12, 13 years ago when you were doing Shanti's insanity, like your joints <laughs> oh, God, I do not that. like that anymore. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, oh, that, that brings back okay. some, some bad memories. <laughs> it's okay to modify some exercises so you don't hurt yourself. However, yeah, I great, do stay very active. Tip. Definitely <laughs> focus on your health as early as possible. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Well, you know what, Robert, I think you and I could talk for hours about this kind of stuff, but unfortunately we don't have that much time. We are coming to the end. So do you have any parting words of wisdom for our audience today that we haven't touched on? Yeah, I guess I would, I would say uh, part of a badass retirement, one of the drivers is creating real adventure in your life. And so whether you're retired or not, I, I think people hear adventure and they go, oh, you know, that's not for me. I, I don't want to do that. But adventure simply means going outside of your comfort zone, pushing yourself a little bit so you feel a bit of a thrill, where you feel alive. And, and I think that's just so important, especially once we're retired, because again, we create these bubbles of safety and security and comfort that once in a while, you got to do something that that scares you a little bit. And, and that's what real adventure is all about. Doing things that just like, you're a little bit worried about, um, but you do it anyway. And that yes. thrill that you get, that spark, man, that that is what makes you feel alive. Yeah, no, I love that. Well, in, you know, in closing, I wanna leave our audience with one of my favorite quotes from your book. Maybe you'll find more joy, more adventure, and more excitement as a retiree than you did in your career. I certainly plan on that being the case for me. <laughs> I love it, Christine. Yes. And if you'd like to download the introduction to Robert's book, Badass Retirement, you can head over to his website, which is badassretirement.com. And be sure to connect with Robert on Instagram, which is at badass retirement and don't worry everyone we'll have everything linked up in the show notes for you this has been fantastic i love this and and i've been waiting to use this button the entire time christine do you, do you mind if i use my effects button use the effects the button. Spe the special button i love this everyone you've got to go check out badass retirement <laughs> that's all it does <laughs> the only thing that button does but man it's fun man i gotta get i gotta get that button <laughs> <laughs> you, you won't leave it alone. I'm telling you, Robert. Robert, this is fantastic. I, I loved you as a guest. This is, man, I, you know, I just, I think people need to hear this message. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that people share the podcast. Uh, I know that we gave out some contact information for you uh, to, to go check out your stuff. Christine, again, a badass retirement is all part of an overall plan uh, when yes. it comes to, you know, managing your emotions with money, because when it mm -hmm. comes to retirement, it, it's a pretty emotional time period, because there's a lot yeah. of things going on transitioning from one part of your life to another. Uh, it, it's, it's a big deal. So if people yeah. want to reach out to you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, they can go straight to the website, christinelucan.com. And if they're curious about the one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, they can go to christinelucan.com forward slash apply. And we can have a chat about your situation and goals and 
see if you might want to work together. All right. Well, again, Robert, thank you so much for being a great guest. Christine, thank you for hosting this and facilitating everything and bringing on an amazing guest. And of course, our last thank you goes to the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Money is Emotional podcast with Christine Lucan. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Christine comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it, and leave a review, as this actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Money is Emotional, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Money is Emotional podcast. To get in touch, visit our website at www.christinelucan.com or drop us a line at hello at christinelucan.com. And don't forget to click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Christine Lucan. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing or tax advice. Always seek the advice of your advisor, tax professional, or other qualified financial professional with any questions you may have regarding your personal finances. 